Hey y'all, it's Roger Downs with Get Out The House Photography. In other words, get out your house and go shoot something with your camera, your camera. And by the way, I'm shooting this on my iPhone today because I was being lazy and didn't do an intro. And I hate it because I can see my face and there's just so much, there's so much face. So, it's so... It... Anyway, since we're in Kentucky, I figured we'd go see the resting place of the world famous Thoroughbred Racehorse Secretariat. That's Claiborne Farms. So that's where we're headed today and there's some great photo opportunities there as well. So come on. All right, so we're about ready to head on out to Claiborne Farms. I'm really excited about it, but I do wanna make sure I put this in here to keep the lawyers happy. I encourage you to go out and see these different places that I suggest in these videos because they're really cool, but you do it at your own risk. And at Claiborne Farms, you'll probably be okay because it's a farm tour and there'll be a guide. As long as you don't do anything stupid like try to get into a stall with one of the horses, put your hand through the bars of the stall, and let the horse nibble on your fingers. You know, simple things like that. And I, look, 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 look. I brought an apple too. I'm not sure if I'm gonna eat it or, or if I'm gonna give it to one of the horses. Don't judge. Generally about 10 to 15 minutes for a horse as far as unloading off the trailer to reloading back onto the trailer. We can generally get about seven to eight mares bred over the course of an hour. So most of our breeding sessions here on the farm only take the course of maybe an hour or so, which we greatly appreciate because these stallions are very efficient in their job here on the farm. Now these Breeders' Cup races are the end of the year championship race meet uh, for the industry. It's run by each different category, so you have the older females running against one another, the older males running against one another, the mile of our horses, the sprint horses, and then there's the classic, which is the premier race of them all. It's run at a mile and a quarter, so it's run the same distance as the Kentucky Derby, but it is an open company, so it's for three-year-olds and older. So you have multiple chances of running in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, us farm employees have the opportunity for on the farm housing as well, which is a real nice perk and complimentary, complimentary housing. So makes it a real nice drive first thing in the morning, but they also do it for their own benefit as well. Of the storm rolling in and the horses need to be gathered up, you have all the helpers already here. So it helps them, but it also it really helps us as far as that not having that monthly rent due. How about the owners? Yep, they all live here as well. Um, th this is how the Hancock family has made their fortune over the years, is through thoroughbred breeding. Um, so they do have winter housing down in Florida, but for the most part throughout the year, they're, they're all here. Uh, Seth Hancock, who syndicated Secretary to bring back, he's here on the farm as well. His son, Walker, who's 29 this year, he's our current president of the farm. Uh, but this barn up here, this is our six stall barn. This is the barn you'll see in many of the Claiborne logos in our advertisement and some of our apparel at the visitor center. The reason I stopped by these two stalls here was mostly to point out one difference you'll notice in some of the stall plaques up here. These stars next to the names. 
Now, this is the traditional indication of a horse imported from a foreign country. Blenheim here, he came over from Great Britain in 1936. He was part of a series of imported stands like Sir Galahad in 1926, Blenheim 1936, Najula in 1950, and Prince of Philip in 1944. Each one of these horses led to the direct descendant or uh, multi generational descendant to a Triple Crown winner. Blenheim here, he's the sire of 1941 Triple Crown winner, World Away. He is also the great, well, not the great, but the grandfather of one of the most influential broodmares of all time in Alma Mode. Now, Alma Mode had two daughters, one by the name of Cosma, another one by the name of Natalma. Natalma was the mother of Northern Dancer, who is considered by many to be one of the greatest breeding signs of all time. Now, Cosma, on the other hand, she was the dam of Halo, which is a silence line, which moved to Japan, but has over the past Oh, 10 or 15 years now, and spreading back to a global uh, reach as well. Now this guy here, he has a 15% stakes winner from runners percentage. Now the elite stallions of the world, the golden rule is kind of getting that 10%. And when you're finding out at 15%, you're really considered at that point kind of a breed shaping stallion. So this guy nowadays is breeding some of the top mares in the world. Probably the best mare he's bred so far this year was champion older mare, Beholder. Now she won several Eclipse Awards over her career but she was confirmed in poll to him last week. He's also bred the likes of champion older turf mayor, Lady Eli, who sold last November for $4.2 million, was the sales topper at the Keeneland November sale. He's also the leading sire here in North America as far as his yearling sales average, with his yearling selling for an average of over $700,000 in the sales ring. Now that being said, he was also responsible for the sales topping Colt and Philly. Now the Philly was a half sister to 2016 Kentucky Derby winner Nyquist, and the top sales price Colt at 2.4 million was a half sibling to two Belmont Stakes winners in Jazil and also Rags to Riches. What Swale meant to the farm here, being the first Kentucky Derby winner, we then changed our burial methods of these horses. Prior to Swale, we had done just the head, heart, and hooves of all the former uh, breeding stallions and brood mares buried here on the farm. Now, it may seem a bit crude in today's day and age, bearing just the head, heart, and hooves, but back then it was seen as the mind, body, and spirit of any great racehorse. Those are the three main ingredients to the great racehorses. So the entire top row here and from Reviewer to Reba Ridge here are all buried in the head heart hose burial method. Now as I said with Swale he's buried full body. All the horses to be buried full body include Round Table, Secretary who's actually full body and bond within a casket here, this prospector, and Dijinsky as well. And our third burial method is cremation, which over the past few years uh, Kentucky passed the state law that any horse going in for autopsy has to be returned cremated or destroyed, if you will. So Seeking the Gold and Pulpit are both cremated stallions here on the farm. Now, within these burials, we have five Kentucky Derby winners and three Triple Crown winners. The Kentucky Derby winners include Swale, Reva Ridge, and Johnstown, who's buried next to Gallant Fox up here. They both, all three of those, won both the Kentucky Derby and Belmont Stakes. The other two Kentucky Derby winners are Triple Crown winners with Secretariat and Gallant Fox. Now, Gallant Fox, who won the 1930 Triple Crown, he's also the only Triple Crown winner to date that is sired a Triple Crown winner when his son Omaha won the 1935 Triple Crown. Now, Secretariat as a Triple Crown winner, he still holds the race record for all three Triple Crown races as far as the times go. Now, his Belmont Stakes was run in 2 minutes and 24 seconds flat, a time that they said even on that date would stand the test of time, and that's still held true to this day.
Now, Justify, who won the Triple Crown this past year, won the Belmont Stakes in 2 minutes and 28 seconds flat. It's a 4 second difference. It doesn't sound like very much, but in racehorse times, that's the equivalent of roughly about 50 racehorse lengths. So if you had ever seen Secretariat's Belmont Stakes, it's a truly incredible race and an athletic achievement. <laughs> he won that race by 31 racehorse lengths, a record all in its own. Justify would be back with the rest of the pack following Secretariat home. Now these are two horses that achieved the same achievement in winning the Triple Crown, but obviously in far different fashions as far as their times go. Um, but Secretariat, he was a truly incredible race horse. On his autopsy, they measured his heart. It weighed roughly about 22 pounds. This is roughly about three times the typical size heart of a thoroughbred race horse. Typically, they're about seven to eight pounds in weight. His was three times that. They attribute that and his immense race stride to why he was such a great race horse. And our third Triple Crown winner, one of my personal favorites of all time, Nijinsky over here. Now Nijinsky, he didn't win the American Triple Crown, he won the European Triple Crown in 1970. He was the son of Northern Dancer out of the Mayor Flaming Cave. Now, he was brought up in Canada for $87,000 by Charles Engelhardt which was actually by incident that he came across Nijinsky up there. They were actually originally looking at another horse and came across Nijinsky here and ended up taking him home. Now Nijinsky, at his peak, he has $750,000 stud. He's the only horse in history to have both a Kentucky Derby winner and an Epsom Derby winner in the same year when Ferdinand won the Kentucky Derby in 86 and also his other son, Chaz Drani, won the Epsom Derby, which is the world's oldest race uh, over in Europe, uh, winning the Epsom Derby that year as well. He's also responsible for the top price sales yearling of all time, a horse by the name of Seattle Dancer, who was bought for $13.1 million in the Keeneland July sale of 1985. He was a half sibling to Seattle Slough. That only sad part about it was that the horse only ever went on to win a little over $100,000 on the racetrack. Uh, didn't do much as a breeding stallion, so obviously the top price horses don't necessarily lead to the top price race horses on, on race time. Uh, most of these sales yearlings are involved off of pedigree and athletic confirmation, but that's no guarantee of race performance further down the line. Now that was cool, wasn't it? Again, thanks to Kyle for taking us on the tour and also to Claiborne Farms for allowing the Kentucky residents to take that tour for free. That was really awesome. What a great experience. The only regret I have is I wish I could have taken my mom on this tour because she was a huge, huge fan of horses and taught kids how to ride quarter horses and she would have loved, absolutely loved this. So um, I'm sure she was with me in spirit. Now, time to go find something to eat.